Hi, I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church, located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today's Sunday School lesson, May the 8th, 2016, is lesson six of this quarter, according to our board's book. And our subject of the lesson today is saying thanks. Our unifying topic is grateful faith. And our lesson today is continuing on in the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. So we start at verse 11 and we'll go through verse 19. And the background scriptures are the same. Verses 11 through 19 of the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. And to start this off, thanksgiving. Thanks for something that we have received. Showing gratitude or thankfulness for receiving something. When I was a child, it was a common thing for parents, not only my parents, but the parents of other children that I was around, that I would see them do the same thing. When someone had given you something as a child, another person or another adult, or even another child had given you something, and the parent, your parent, if you didn't immediately say thank you or I appreciate that, your parent would say, what are you going to say? Would ask you, what are you going to say? And when they asked that question, they were actually expecting you to turn to that person and in some type of way express extreme gratitude for that. The parents of days gone by definitely taught, and I realize some parents today still teach the same thing, teach that we should show gratitude when we are appreciative of something that someone has given us an expression or even shown us to, that they care about us in a certain type of way, we were to show some sense of gratefulness or gratitude toward that person. And in, our, in this lesson today, we're going to see that gratitude was something that was very important when it came to the spirituality of a person but it was often left out. So in, in this lesson today, this is, uh, we see Jesus as he is journeying toward Jerusalem. We know that when he's journeying toward Jerusalem here at this time, when he does finally get to Jerusalem, he's going there to die for our sins, to uh, suffer uh, at the cross of Calvary. We know that he is going to do that for us, but he's journeying in that way at this time. For the last couple of lessons, we've been seeing that. Verse uh, verse 11 says, and I gave all, every one of these verses in, in, in this lesson today, uh, its own text, its, its own heading, its own title. And verse 11, I actually named it the coincidence which I believe that the Bible doesn't have any coincidence. So I have a question mark after that and says and say no. But it's, it starts out like this uh, under the coincidence. It said, it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Okay, this is Jesus. He, as we forestated, he is journeying toward Jerusalem. This is that time when he's going to Jerusalem to die for us, but he is journeying there. And he's not getting there in an extreme hurry, it seems, that he is uh, bidding his time. He, he, he knows that the proper time will come when he has to be there. And it's a time that he would choose for himself, for he had told his disciples that I have the power to lay my life down, but I also have the power to take it up again. He knew exactly when the proper time to get there. Well, journeying toward Jerusalem, he goes through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, not actually going into Galilee because 
if he would have gone to Galilee at this time, it would have been too soon because Herod desired, Herod Antipas desired to kill him there if he would have come, came to Galilee at this time. But he also didn't want to get into Judea too soon because if he had got there, the Sanhedrin were actually plotting at this time to kill Jesus Christ, to kill him. So this, it, in this particular passage, it tells us that he was he just went through the mist of Samaria and Galilee. And verse 12 says, as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And I actually titled this particular verse, verse 12, as prayer meeting from a distance. Now, this prayer meeting, look at this prayer meeting. He entered to into this certain this certain village. There met him 10 men, but not actually meeting him head on. They met him from afar. They were far off from him because under the law, they were not supposed to come into close contact proximity to a person that I, it was it was so many feet that they had to stay away in Leviticus chapter 13 just not going all the way into every part of the leprosy but verse 45 says and the leper in whom the plague is his clothes shall be rent and his head bare and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry unclean unclean. Anytime someone was about to approach him or get close to him, he was to let them know that I am unclean. In other words, leprosy was an unclean disease. This is the law that God gave. This is what God told them to say. She yell out, shout out to that person so that they will know that you have this contagious disease and you're not to come close to him, or you would be exposing yourself to this disease. So you would shout out unclean, unclean. Verse 46 of that 13th chapter of Leviticus says, all the days wherein the plague shall be in him, it, all the days that he has this disease, that he knows he has this disease shall be in him, he shall be defiled. In other words, no one is to come into this certain lit, uh, limit uh, of space between him. He's, they're supposed to keep a certain amount of space between the two of them because he is unclean and we see here defiled. He is unclean and he shall dwell alone. Without the camp or outside of the camp shall his habitation be. He shall not come into the presence where the majority of the people were residing. In the 14th chapter, it lets us know that if someone of Leviticus, it lets us know if someone start to see that their disease was in remission, that, then that person would go to the priest. And the priest was to look and examine that person. If they see that the scaly skin was starting to go away or had gone away and their skin had cleared up and, and they were actually healed, it was the priest that would pronounce this person uh, that was able to come back into the general assembly of people. And, and it says that 10 men met, met him. Now, this person was to remain alone. But under the law, that was alone, meaning that you have this disease. You are unclean. So you stand or you stay without the camp or outside of the city, in this case, pretty much, or outside of the village or outside of the general population. And But look how they did actually group together. Now, we will see this later on as we get into this, but we, we want to recognize this in a hurry, though, because more than likely, it didn't matter what nationality you were from, you all gathered together if you all had leprosy. You all had the same disease. So you did have some type 
of fellowship as we see here and we've seen on other on another occasion in the old testament where people that have the disease they would get together and they would they would just kind of have a fellowship where they could uh be around and have someone to at least communicate with and family members would bring out food and supply the things that these people need to survive without the the camp and so that they could live because they had this leprosy because they had this this scaly skin they were able to be identified early in in the, in the uh the sickness in the disease they they stood afar off when as they uh as as he entered this city they were afar off and then we see in verse 13 i i I call verse 13 the cry or the petition. So here we see in verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, they lifted up their voices and more than likely in unison, they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, this is why we labeled verse 11 as the coincidence or not. I don't believe that there are coincidences in the Bible when Jesus just happened to be on the scene and someone receives a healing. I believe that Jesus already knows because he is God that this person is in need or these people at this time were in need of healing. And this was a time for God to demonstrate his power among the people in front of the people. And, and this was not a coincidence because something miraculous would happen. And the, the kingdom of God would look, look even better at this time to the people and it, things would be great. Their voices, they lifted up their voices and they, they called out to Jesus and, and the cry that they had or the petition that they had for Jesus, the body of their prayer was to have mercy. Now, most of us would say would, would think that if they if Jesus came in proximity and I was sick and I knew my sickness and my disease, I would ask Jesus to heal me of that particular thing. But these men, they conspired, it seems, to all cry in unison to have mercy. Mercy is compassion. Look at us with compassion. And when you look at us with compassion, in that compassion, maybe you will have the desire to give us what you see that we really need. And we really need healing. Now, do we deserve it? That is the question that we often ask ourselves when we see that word mercy, because mercy means that I'm receiving the healing, something that uh, I, I deserve what I'm going through, but I'm being taken away from that or that is being taken away from me. Now, when sometimes when we, we, we talk about grace and we talk about mercy, Grace is something we don't deserve, definitely, and but the Lord gives it to us anyway. Mercy, we don't deserve that, but yet we receive it. We don't deserve the mercy. But these guys ask for mercy. But I believe they were asking for it more on the compassionate side. They want the Lord to look at them compassionately, and they receive healing. Now, the, the question comes to mind, how did they know about Jesus? Well, more than likely the same way, because for them to even cry out to him at this time, they would have, they would have had to exercise some type of faith in what they had heard, what they had heard about Jesus. They said, Jesus, master, master there, meaning overseer or commander which means that it, this you know that Jesus is someone that is in definite authority. And that meaning this he even has the authority to heal us. And then verse 14 says, And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. 
Caterizzo means uh, cleansed here. It means that they were cleansed or purged, purified of, of the disease, of the sickness that they had. Now we'll see another word that when it when it means that 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 they're they're totally saved or spiritually cleansed, spiritually healed, and meaning saved. So here we have, verse fourteen. We said that this is the command from the commander is what we actually titled this one. It said when he saw them, he saw them when they cried out to him. He looked at them. Now, they were asking for compassion. Have mercy on us. Look at us. See our situation and show us some type of compassion. Show us that you care. Show us that you want to, to help us and aid us in some type of way as they looked at Jesus and, and he looked back at them. So look what Jesus says. On other occasions, on another occasion, Jesus had touched the leper and, and the leper was healed. But look at it, look at it this time. This was 10 men that had leprosy. He said, go, show yourselves to the priest. Go to the priest. We just said there in Leviticus that the priest would be the ones that would have to examine the person. Now, the priest wasn't necessarily a physical doctor, but they were the ones that the Lord had given authority to say that this person is cleansed and can be released back into general population, or in this case, back into the city or the village at this time. So they needed to go and show themselves to the priest so that they could be approved to be around other people. So it says, and can, it came to pass that as they went, in other words, they didn't exchange words about what Jesus had said. They trusted him enough to head the direction of the priest. All 10 of them, that it says, as they went, they were catarism. As they went, they were purified. They were purged of their disease. They, they were cleansed when, as they went. When they started to go, their faith healed them. Before they actually was, was healed, they had to demonstrate this faith, or they did demonstrate this faith. Faith took them to where they needed to go. Faith is the instrument that, that gets us to our salvation. So they, they started in, in their journey of faith first, and then they were cleansed. And then because they obeyed the command from the commander. See, even though the commander commanded them, it still demanded human response. The Lord commanded us all as Christians to go and make other disciples, but it requires human response for us to act upon that faith. Many of us probably never witnessed to anybody, but the Lord has told us to. Therefore, we do have to act in a humanistic response to what the Lord says when we have enough faith to tr trust him and take him as, at his word. Verse 15, we, we labeled that as the reaction. So here, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. It is said that sometimes with this disease leprosy, that sometimes the person cannot speak really good. Their voice is limited because of their disease. But one of the, the 10, one out of the 10, only one out of the 10 turned back. He went back, but he didn't just turn back to go and sit back because I don't believe that I'm healed. He saw that he was healed. He looked down and saw that those hands that were scaly no longer had scales on them anymore. He may have begun to sing a tune or a hymn or something and, and noticed that his voice was back again. And he turned back and he went back and that voice got loud when he got back to where he was going and he, he didn't just go back, he glorified God. 
Now, I don't know if he really recognized the fact truly that this was God in the flesh that had healed him at this time, but he did recognize the power of God had healed him, so he glorified God in this. Now, that wasn't the amazing part. We, we're, gonna, we're getting to the amazing part. Verse 16 says, and fell down on his face, the prostrate before the Lord at his feet, right down there at the Lord's feet. So we named this verse, the gratitude. And it says, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Wow. He was a, a Samaritan. Now, the gratitude. Gratitude is that, that quality of feeling of being grateful or thankful. Great grateful being that warm, uh, deep, appreciative feeling or, uh, because of some act of kindness, maybe a kind word, a kind gesture, or being given something and very kindly and 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 just grateful for that showing expression of gratitude so but this person was a samaritan now it almost gives you the sense that the rest of them may have been jews but what made them all come together and all 10 of them could be together in one place was the fact that they were yoked together in the fact that they all had the same disease. When, when things are really bad and we're all in the same hole, we seem to all pretty much get along together. Maybe as these guys were going along there and they began to be healed, they start realizing I'm a Jew and he's a Samaritan and now I cannot like him anymore. Now that's not in the scripture. It, it's just things that you you feel like can happen because we do live in a realistic society. And we see that once things straighten out, you know, some of us at, at, here in the South, we went through Hurricane Katrina and when when no one had anything, no one had anything. When, when, when water was given to one person, the, the rich person and the poor person, the, your money wasn't going to buy you that water. And it, it, you were all on the same level and playing field at that time. So it wasn't any big eyes and little U's. But now that things are starting to be normal again, it could happen. And we could start seeing ourselves as I'm a Jew and you're a half breed. That, that we, we don't see that, but we can identify that something like that could have possibly been happening. Verse 17 says, and Jesus answering said, were, not, were there not 10 cleansed, but where are the nine? Now, I labeled this verse, the indictment. The indictment of the nine, because where are the other nine? We just said that they, they journeyed on. Jesus, Jesus here, he, he was asking a question, were not there 10? Did, didn't I tell 10 to strike out walking toward the, the, the priest and they left and they were healed on the way? Where, where are the other nine? He, Jesus asks here. So this is an indictment because this one person came back with total gratitude, total thankfulness, pouring out his heart before the Lord, glorifying God. He, he was at God's feet. I don't know if he truly really grasped that or understood it, but he knew that this man had a link to God at least. And he was there and, and warmly and deeply appreciative of the things that he had received from God. And he was expressing that in his actions as well as in his words. He was not just giving lip service. He was showing that he was truly thankful. The apostle Paul said in the fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians, I think verse 18, and in all things, we should give thanks. Right after he said in the 17th verse that we should pray without ceasing. These guys prayed to the Lord. That prayer meeting was successful, but it was only successful to a certain extent. They had healing faith. They were able to get healed. Everyone, everyone was healed, but only one would come back to get a total healing. So, so look, let, let's, let's continue on. Verse 18 says, there are not found that return 
to glorify God, save this stranger. Where are the other nine? So here is what I call the unexpected, this, this stranger. More than likely, these other guys, as we forestated, were Jews. So why didn't the Jews come back? They were first given the oracles of God. They know more about giving things and what they should do and, and the things that should happen in the life of a, of a believer than anyone. But yet this Samaritan comes back, this stranger comes back. And so he would be the unexpected, and but he did. And Jesus did expect him to come back because Jesus is God. He knew exactly what was gonna happen at, in that situation. He said that, that we're not found that were returned to give glory to God. Where are they? They should be giving glory to God also. They should be showing extreme gratitude also before they actually went to the priest because they knew that they were healed when they looked down at their hands. When their friends that were walking with them say, "Man, your head is clean now. You you don't you're not your skin is not scaly anywhere anymore." But the unexpected came back. The Samaritan, this stranger, came back. Jesus says, "Save this stranger." A good word to use there in the King James Version, because that's exactly what would happen in the 19th verse. It says, "Save this stranger." Verse 19 says, "And he said unto him." Jesus said unto this stranger, he said, arise. Now he's laying prostrate before Jesus. He has humbled himself before God, shouting in a loud voice, glorifying God, giving him thanks for his healing. And Jesus tells him to get up, arise. You can go your way. You go now and show yourself to the priest also. Your faith has made thee whole. In other words, you're totally saved. This is, is what I named this 19th verse. I titled this 19th verse, totally saved. Sozo, we said carizo uh, there in the, in the 14th verse, but now this man gets sozo, which is totally saved. The Lord saved him, made him whole, Dr. Luke says here in this 19th verse. So the expression of gratitude, Say, uh, saying thanks goes a long ways and all things we should give thanks. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word, Lord. Lord, we do want to show you extreme gratitude for how good you have been to us, even helping us to understand that we should give thanks. So Father, we pray that now that you will search our hearts, forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen.